Welcome to Sensible Second Hand Classics, the uh, show where we look at cars that uh, you can buy that are over 10 years old and are worth between one and five thousand pounds. This is a 1990 Nissan Bluebird T72 1.8 GS and uh, it's really rather nice. So the Bluebird T12, or later T72, was launched in 1986. It actually replaced the Nissan Stanza in our market, although this car was known under an awful lot of different names around the world, as was common for Nissan at the time. It was very confusing whether they marketed their cars in the 1980s. So this is a really late one, it would have been built in Sunderland. Early ones are built in Japan, and for a while uh, we got production from both Japan and uh, from Sunderland. I know that uh, Steph, my driver classic, has actually had a, a Japanese built one on her channel. The gearbox in this is really nice straight away. Um, it's a very easy car to drive for the era. Um, possibly the Primera is even is even easier than this. We have got a carb on this, although it does have an auto choke, which makes things a little bit easier, although sometimes auto chokes aren't great. This is a 1.8 engine developing 88 horsepower. Uh, other engines available were a 1.6 with 82 horsepower. The earlier version of this engine, which had a different capacity, had 90 horsepower. And uh, then you could go from 1.8 turbo, uh, turbo version of this engine, which developed 135 horsepower. Then there were two two-liter engines, um, 105 early on, and then 115 later on. There were also some <laughs> diesels available, but as usual, due to controversial government legislation and all kinds of other reasons, we're going to talk about diesels on this channel. Do talk about it's just the way this car kind of glides down the road it's it's really really easy to drive the gearbox is quite nice it reminds me of an n13 sunny gearbox actually you can now put it into fifth quite easily as well although we'll go for fourth where we are weather today is uh, quite terrible so i do apologize if in the next uh, section um we have problems with wind noise, it's just the way that it goes. I'm very grateful this car's got power steering because I gather that without power steering they are somewhat of a handful. I keep reaching for the other side because I keep thinking it's like um, a lot of the other Nissans of the time and the indicator stalk is on the right, actually on the left. But yeah, it seems to ride quite well. I'm, I'm, I'm really quite surprised with this. Sometimes. Japanese cars of, of the 1980s, it's, it's, it's a 1990 this one, but it's effectively a 1980s car. Um, they are just very firm on the ride. This, is, this isn't at all. The whole thing is just so unbelievably easy to drive. It just requires no effort whatsoever. And I can see why people just sort of got onto these and, and really like them. Um, it's definitely a little bit easier to drive than say I don't know, a Sierra, perhaps even a Cavalier, or the Cavaliers of Mark II's are pretty nice. Lloyd Vehicle Consulting stickers, t shirts, and mugs are available by clicking the link to the Google form in the video description below. I apologise for the wind noise, uh, viewers. Uh, I'm afraid there's not much I can do about that. It is blowing a bit of the gale today. This car is in absolutely perfect condition inside and outside. It's easy to see why examples like this these days are worth something like four to five thousand pounds. You can't buy a Bluebird like this T12 or T72 uh, with an MOT for less than about £1,500 now, possibly even more than that. 
So yeah, it's a very late one, 1 1.8 GS. Trim levels were changed um, with uh, the facelift that occurred around uh, January 1988. And I think this looks pretty nice in this paint. It's not faded or anything. I don't know if this car's been resprayed at some point in its life, but it it looks really, really nice. Let's uh, have a look in the boot. We'll use this uh, use this key. So uh, Dave, who owns this car, has got uh, some mobility issues, hence he's got a wheelchair and a boot of it, but it fits pretty nicely. It's a good demonstration of how much uh, space there is. The spare wheel will be under there, but I, I can't lift the wheelchair and, um, and film uh, at the same time. I'm afraid it's just me here today, so uh, we're just going to have to do it like that. Blaupunk speakers in the back here, which look very neat. Um, this has got the original radio in it, I think, as well. Just make sure we put the key in the pocket before we close the boot. We don't want to uh, get locked out, that would be bad. So that's my driving position and I'm about 5 foot 11. There's not the most room in the back of these. I remember going in one of these as a mini cab in London many, many years ago. And yeah, the headlining's not sagging or anything. It's very tight in this car. But yeah, there's not a lot of room at all really. Um, the Primeras are a little bit bigger than this, which is one advantage, although it's just so charming. All this kind of sort of brown fabric and these little nets and the same fact being repeated on the doors and this slight kind of brown tinge to plastics and the um, little ashtrays here and it's just wonderful. It's just a fantastic car. You can see it's got split folding seats in it as well. Um, Electric rear windows in this, which is good. It's a GS, so we're kind of one spec here from the top, which would have been the GSX, which would have been the most luxurious one. And um, there were also executive and uh, Z ZX models above that. The ZX was a, red, was a turbo, um, but this is it's pretty good actually. This feels really nice and well trimmed. Right, I think I'd better get in the front. It actually feels quite solid and well made for the it was designed in the mid 1980s. To make sure I hold the door open so I don't get it blown shut for me by the wind. Um, here comes the door. Oh, it's actually not that bad. Right, there we go. It's nice and peaceful in here now. I recognise these things like the air vents and the uh, heater controls from other 1980s Nissans I've driven. I've actually driven quite a lot of them now. Um, so I'm quite a fan of them actually. Um, these stalks are very similar to the ones on N13 Sunny. Um, I think the B12 Sunnies as well had these, but we've got some nice instrumentation in here. Um, we've got two trip meters as well, which is nice. And the car's only done 38,000 miles. Isn't that wonderful? Well, it's time we checked the uh, secret mission document storage viewers and let's see what we owe. Uh, um, uh, no. It's all going so well, we're just going to have to put it in there. There we go. So we've got power locks, power windows, automatic up and down. I don't know what these are here. What, what, what else could you, could you need? Um, I think that's the instrument panel dimming or something. Cigar lighter. Heated rear window. Hazard lights. So that's nice. Uh, original stereo. With a little place to put. I don't know. Is that an ashtray? I think this is the ashtray actually. So I don't know what this is. Presumably you can put cassettes or something here. The P10 Primera has much better cassette storage in it. That is amazing actually. You put them in there, I suppose, or there. Door bins are really small. I mean, look at that. They're really, really small for some reason. Electric sunroof in this car, which I'm not going to operate because, well, yeah, we get problems, that sort of thing. But a classic kind of 1980s style sunshade, which is uh, which is nice. Sorry, that's a fog lamp. Rated window is there. And uh, got powered mirrors just there. Excellent. We've also got the classic 
Nissan of this era, variable intermittent wipe, which I think is wonderful. That's the only uh, thing I can uh, describe it as. That clock's actually showing the right time as well. <sighs> Don't really have any complaints about this car, viewers. I think it's um, I think it's fantastic. Uh, Ian Seabrook has owned, I think, two Bluebirds uh, over the course of uh, many years, and he seems to like them too, as does Mr. Coleman, a rubbish mechanic. Um, he's very fond of these, and he's raced many in his time. Right, I think it's time to uh, have a look under the bonnet. Don't know what it is about Nissans of this area, but they always have a sort of warning for pretending as best or send them. So this is the uh, CA engine, uh, all petrol Bluebirds of this era, the uh, T12s and the T72s came with the uh, CA engine, 1.6, 1.8 or 2 litre capacities. Lots and lots of room to work on. I mean, look at these big sort of spaces in here. Um, I think that's the alternator on the, on the front of there. Goodness me. And yeah, of course, you can see the battery and the gearbox and everything. But actually, he hasn't got a remote brake servo either. I wonder if we've got a plaque in here which tells us where the car was made. Yes, we do. There we go. Nissan Motor Manufacturing UK Limited. Brilliant. Yeah, it looks simple enough to reach virtually anything. Um, got a carburetor on here, uh, auto choke. Some of the two litres did a fuel injection, but this doesn't. It has a carb on it. So that's very practical. Again, this example is really, really clean. There's just no rust or anything on it. Um, fantastic. Right. I think it's time to go for another drive view since I seem to be enjoying myself so much. This engine is really, really willing. Once the gearbox is warmed up a bit like it is now, it's very positive. It's, it's got quite good road manners, this. I mean, they don't look like much, these. A lot of the 1980s Nissans have this really square edge styling, which made them look very old fashioned very, very quickly. But it's just so smooth and easy to drive. The, engine feels very torquey. I think this is an 8 valve unit actually, so that probably explains why it feels like it does. I kind of don't necessarily want to give this car back to Dave, who owns it. Because uh, I quite like it. It's not actually that often that I drive cars of this age and sort of want to keep them. Normally they're a bit compromised and a bit difficult to kind of deal with on a sort of daily basis, but this, this is really good. Um, I'm really pleasantly surprised. I heard that these were really good and, uh, you know, that they can rack up enormous mileages, uh, particularly as like mini cabs. I know they were popular with banger racers for a while because they're very, very kind of sturdy and the engines are good, but just as a normal car to sort of drive around in. This is fantastic. It's even better than an N13 Sunny, and those are very good. Um, but this is this is better. I think this is I think this is fantastic. Let's now look at some uh, T12 and T72 Bluebird trim levels. If you're wondering what the difference between the T12 and T72 is, they're quite similar, but in, uh, I think it was middle of 1987, they changed the production code of these from T12 to T72. It wasn't actually at the time of the facelift in January 1988, it was before that, or despite what uh, I've read online. I uh, could be wrong about that, but that's what I understand. They were changed to T72 before the facelift in 1988. So um, the trim levels, for the earlier cars were L, LX, SLX, Turbo ZX with a 1.8 turbo with version of this engine, then the SGX. Later on, they dropped um, the previous trim levels and they were replaced with LS, GS, and GSX. And then in 89, they introduced the premium 
uh, which sort of was about the same as an LX, they're quite similar. Um, and then the Executive, which I think is above the GSX. The Turbo was available as both a Turbo ZX and then a Turbo Executive. And I've seen a Turbo Executive actually at the NEC. Um, they're quite something. The car was actually known by a lot of other names, um, known as the Alster, the Liberta, the Maxima, the Stanza, and the Violet, um, although we called it the Bluebird in this country and quite a few other markets. It's worth pointing out as well that um, the estate version of the Bluebird that was sold at the time was not the same platform at all. It was a, it was a U11 uh, Bluebird. It's quite common for Nissans at the time to use two different platforms when comparing the sort of hatchbacks of the saloons and estates. So viewers, the uh, T72 Bluebird in this case, is this a car that you should consider as a classic for under £5,000? Well, I don't see why not. I don't think it's even um, quite a difficult to find parts of this. I could be wrong about it. There seem to be a good few of these still around. And actually, from what I understand, the corrosion resistance of these cars is quite good for a 1980s Japanese design. Uh, particularly ones built in Britain. Um, we weren't known for our kind of manufacturing quality at the time, should we say. But I've really enjoyed this car. I knew these were really good. Mr. Coleman, Rubbish Mechanic, has been telling me how good these were. And uh, obviously, many of you would have seen Ian Seabrook recently drive the electric version of this, the new bird. Um, and I have seen that car in person, actually. It was at the SMMT uh, testing day at Millbrook and Bedfordshire back in April. Um, but I... I'm quite happy with this 1.8 petrol one. I think this is really good. Uh, 1.6 maybe struggle a little bit, um, but this seems fantastic. I haven't really got much to say about it other than the room of the back is a bit uh, compromised perhaps, and uh, also the styling for the era is a little bit on the dated side, but that's not really a concern. It all adds to the charm. Anyway, thank you ever so much indeed once again for watching this episode of Sensible Secondhand Classics. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like this video and uh, leave a comment below. And we'll see you again soon for more reasonably priced retro One, two, three, four.